Fall of Saigon, April 1975. I was not even one year old when the Vietnam War ended. But through my parents' experiences, the war has actually had a major impact on my life. And that's what I want to share with you tonight. My dad was an evac surgeon in the Mekong Delta. And when I was a kid, he would sometimes tell me about his experiences in Vietnam. Now, my dad did not talk about the terrible things I'm sure he had to see or the hardships he endured. Instead, my dad used his stories to remind me the importance of being able to laugh at yourself and to find humor in even the most difficult of situations. For example, my dad was a nice Jewish boy born and raised in the East Bronx, New York City. Never been further south than Staten Island. And then the Army sent him for basic training to Fort Bragg in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Yeah. One weekend, my dad decided to go into town to do his laundry. My dad walked into a laundromat in the Deep South in 1965. As he would tell the story to me, so I walk into this laundromat, and they got this big sign over a bunch of the machines, and it says whites. So I go over to one of those machines, and I put in my t-shirts, my jockey shorts, and my tube socks. <laughs> and then I take the rest of my laundry, my, my jeans, my dark shirts, my dress socks, and I head over to the other side of the laundromat, because they got a sign over there, over those machines, it says colored. <laughs> When this little old lady stops me and says, Boy, what in the same hell are you doing? I said, Hey, lady, yeah, this is the first time I'm doing my own laundry. But my mother taught me, you got to separate the clothes. <laughs> I just figured the machines, you know, were calibrated differently. Once in Vietnam, my dad continued to have unique adventures and experiences. My dad provided medical care to dozens of soldiers, some of whom were not even human. Yet, yeah, one night, this huge hulking MP, military policeman, walks into my field hospital, and he's cradling in his arms his guard dog who's been wounded. And the MP just says, fix my dog. <laughs> now, the dog has been wounded in the head by a grenade, and I tell the MP, I say, hey, look, buddy, I'm really sorry, but I'm not a veterinarian, and, and we're not equipped here to operate on a dog. The MP nods. Then he unholsters his 45, lays it on the operating table in front of me, and says, I said, fix my dog. <laughs> and I looked that guy right in the eye, and you know, I said, I said, hey, I'm gonna fix your dog. <laughs> Now, two things you need to know to fully appreciate my dad's story is one, during the Vietnam era, war dogs were bred and trained to be vicious. To the point that once a dog had bonded with its handler, if the handler was killed, most often the dog had to be put down because it was considered too dangerous to try and have someone else retrain the dog. The other thing you need to know is that before my dad was going to attempt this operation, the anesthesiologist pulled him aside and said, Hey, Doc, I have no idea how to safely anesthetize a German Shepherd. <laughs> That's right, my dad was now going to have to attempt to extract a large piece of shrapnel from the head of a government-trained killing machine while it was wide awake. Fun fact, this particular killing machine's name was, oddly enough, Sunshine. <laughs> Obviously, my dad survived, but he did walk away with a little less respect for dog senses of smell. Hey, they keep saying dogs can smell fear, but I don't buy that, because that dog, she couldn't smell urine-soaked underwear, let me tell you. <laughs> Just to be clear, Sunshine made a full recovery and was fine. I loved hearing my dad's stories. I imagined his time in Vietnam like he was a character on the TV show MASH. I imagined him hanging out, cracking jokes with Hawkeye and Klinger. But my mother knew a very different story. My grandfather was a career Navy pilot, so my mother had grown up on Navy and Marine bases during World War II and the Korean War. And she had very clear memories of how everything in her neighborhood would stop. 
when the base chaplain's car would turn down her street bearing the worst possible news. And how my grandmother and every other mother would grab their children and run into the house and wait for that car to pass. And my mother told me how often you could hear the crying from the house where the car did stop. And many times, wives would refuse to come to the door. And they would just keep screaming, it's not true. You've made a mistake. Please, you must have the wrong house. My grandmother did what she could to comfort her friends and neighbors. Now, while I was, my dad was in Vietnam, my mom lived on an army base. And she again learned to fear the base chaplain's car. And it was her turn to try and comfort her friends and neighbors. So when I was old enough and we were here in Washington, my mom took me to see the memorial. And she had me look at all those names. And then she told me, never forget that there are names not on this wall because of your father. There are soldiers who were able to come home and be husbands and fathers and grandfathers because of your father. I asked my dad about this, and he was typically very self-effacing and said, yeah, that might be true. I mean, I did treat a lot of guys for the clap. <laughs> my parents' stories clearly influenced me. Next month, I will be celebrating 15 years of service in the Defense Department. But more importantly, <laughs> thank you, thank you, all right, thank you. <laughs> For those who are familiar with government service, you know that now I get eight hours of leave per pay period, so that's the good thing. But my parents' stories, more importantly, provided me an example of, of how to function, how to get through the most difficult situations with courage and strength. And this was an example that helped me through the most difficult moments in my life, from unemployment to my wife's disability to one night in college when I was woken by a phone call and a frantic voice telling me that my parents had been in a terrible accident. And I quickly realized that there will be two empty seats at my graduation. I miss my parents every single day, but I have faith that they have been with me and that they have been able to see how their stories have helped me write mine. Thank you.